Hi, I'm Beth from My Tutoring Bee, and today we are continuing talking about factoring. Today we're going to be talking about perfect square trinomials and the difference of two squares. So let's get started. So in my previous video, we learned about factoring just using a common factor and factoring trinomials into two different binomials. So today we're going to continue that discussion and talk about how to factor perfect square trinomials and the difference of two squares. So our perfect square trinomials are actually going to initially look very similar to how I taught you how to factor trinomials in my last video. We're going to go ahead and set this up with two parentheses, two sets of parentheses, because we want to factor this into two binomials. And we'll see what happens after we factor these and then how it's a little bit different than just a regular trinomial and why this one is special. So again, we're going to start off by looking at our first term, which is x squared, and how do we create x squared? What are the factors of x squared? x squared is just x times x, so we're going to split that up and write x and x as the first term in each set of these binomials. Remember that a trinomial is just a result of foiling two binomials, and so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to undo that foiling and separate them back out into two binomials. So now that we've looked at our first term, now we're going to skip over this one and go directly to our last term, our third term, which is 49, and figure out our factors of 49. Now we could multiply 1 times 49 to get 49, but 49 is a special number because it is a perfect square. And that number is 7, that square is 7, so 7 times 7 gives us 49. So that's what we're going to use here in our second position of each of our binomials. Because what happens when we add seven and seven? That gives us 14, right? Now we do have a negative 14, which is pretty easy to solve. In order to add seven plus seven to get a negative 14, that means both of these sevens need to be negative. So when we multiply, when we go to solve this, I'll, I'll show how to solve this in just a moment, or, or check our work, I mean not solve it. Um, we are going to see that this will wind up being giving us our original trinomial here. So what's unique about this is that both of these binomials are exactly the same. So a lot of times what you'll see how you'll see these written is simply x minus 7 squared, right? Because it's the same thing. All this is saying is we're going to multiply x minus 7 times itself. So let's actually go through and FOIL these and see how this works to give us this trinomial. x times x is x squared. x times negative 7 is negative 7x. Negative 7 times x is another negative 7x. And then negative 7 times negative 7 is a positive 49. When we combine our like terms here in the middle, we get x squared minus 14x plus 49. So we do wind up with this same trinomial that we began with. So this is sort of the way that we check our work here. So this is our factored x squared minus 14x plus 49. Okay, great, let's try another one. So here we've got x squared plus 6x plus 9. So once you start to work with factoring trinomials a lot, hopefully you'll start to see some patterns with this. Whenever, what you're really wanting to look for in order to find a perfect square trinomial is, is this last term a perfect square? And this square root of that last term, if you double it, will that give you your middle term? That's essentially what we're looking for. So is this divided by 2 and the square root of this the same number? That's what we're looking for when we're looking for perfect square trinomials. So let's see if that happens. We're going to start off with our two binomials. We get x and x for our first terms, that's how we arrive at x squared, and then again we're going to look at this last term, and we have a couple of different factors for 9, we could do 1 times 9, or 9 is a perfect square because 3 times 3 gives us 9. So we know that that 
is going to be our second term because when we add three and three, we do get six. So because all of this is positive, because this one is positive, we know that our signs are going to be the same. And because this middle term is positive, we know that both of these have to be positive. All right, awesome. Now we're going to look at the difference of two squares. So you will start to recognize some of these patterns, uh, again, as you work through some of these problems and start practicing. What we're looking for in order to find a difference of two squares is that each term has to be a perfect square, which these both are. X squared is just X times X, right? And then four can be two times two, and they have to be subtracted here. So if this, if you see an addition sign here in the middle, it's not going to be a difference of two squares. But if you see a subtraction, then that's your cue to think, okay, well now I know that this is a difference of two squares. So let's figure out how to factor these so that if we were to refoil them, they would give us this binomial again at the beginning. So we're going to start off with our two binomials. Again, we're going to look at our first term first. X squared can be separated into X and X. And then the four, the last term, is going to be separated into two and two. So in our last problem, both signs were going to be the same. In this problem, how can we make sure that this four is a negative four? In order to get a negative four when we multiply two times two, one of this, the twos has to be positive and one of the twos has to be negative. And that also helps us with something else. It helps us with that middle term. Because when we FOIL this, x times x is x squared, x times negative two is negative two x, positive two times x is positive two x, and then two times negative two is negative four. And so look and see what happens when we combine our like terms here in the middle. If we've got a negative two x and a positive two x, they essentially cancel out and leave us with a zero x, right? So as you can see in our original expression here, we don't have that regular x term because it's really a zero x that lives here. We just don't write the zero x. Just like in this problem, we had the negative 14 x here as our middle term. In this one, our middle term doesn't exist because it's zero x and zero times anything is zero. So it represents nothing. So when we combine our like terms, these actually can just cancel out and go away and we're left with x squared minus four, which does match our original expression. All right, one more example for you on the difference of two squares. Here we have x squared minus 49. x squared is a perfect square. 49 is a perfect square and they are being subtracted. So we've got all the criteria met to know that these have to be the difference of two squares. So when we set these up, we know that we're going to split up our x squared into x and x. We know that we're going to split up our 49 into its square root, which is seven and seven. And then in order to make this a negative 49, we have to have a positive seven and a negative seven. Now you could, we could make this a negative seven and this one a positive seven. It doesn't matter the order of these, any of these binomials, it does not matter the order of them, just as long as you have the correct sign in front of each of the second terms in each binomial. So again, we could, we could FOIL this and I encourage you to pause, FOIL it, see if you come up with this original binomial that we started off with. So I would love if you would try out some of these on your own and see if you can identify all of the different types of factoring. All of these problems have types of factorings that we've learned in this video and in the previous video about common factoring and trinomials. All the different forms are there. So I encourage you to pause the video try them out and then come back and we'll work them out together and see how we did. Okay, so hopefully you've tried these out on your own. Let's go ahead and take a look at these and see how to factor all of these different types of trinomials and binomials. 
So we're going to start with this first one, x squared minus 21x minus 72. So the first thing that I want to do is look and see, can I factor out anything from all three of these terms? And I can't. There's, there is no x in each of the terms, so I can't factor out x from each thing. Um, 21 and 72, let's see, 3 is a factor for both of them, but I can't factor out a 3 from this first term. Okay, so we know that we're going to go straight into binomials. The next thing that I want to do is try to see if I can identify any of those special cases, like a perfect square trinomial. So 72 is not a perfect square, so I don't think that this one's going to be a perfect square trinomial. I'm just going to be doing some regular factoring. So we've got x squared. We know that we're going to start with x and x. 72, I'm going to list out all of my factors for 72, for, for negative 72. Okay, so I didn't list out all of the different options with a negative one and a positive 72 or positive one and negative 72. We're gonna try it out this way. I know that one of these numbers has to be negative and the other one has to be positive with whatever pair I choose. So what I'm looking for is which pair am I going to subtract that's going to give me 21. And that's got to be 3 and 24. If I subtract 3 from 24, that's going to give me 21. And in order for me to get a negative 21, I know that the 24 has to be negative because the negative number needs to carry more weight. So we're going to write in here plus 3 and minus 24. Okay, did you, hopefully you got that one right. Let's go on over here to this one. We've got x squared minus 12 plus 36. Again, the first thing that I want to do is see, can I factor out anything from all three of these terms? If the answer is no, then we're just gonna go ahead and go into binomials, which it looks like that is the case. So here we go. I know that this is going to be x and x. And then I also want to look at this last term and see, is it a perfect square? It is, 36 is six times six. Does that also work in order to make this middle term? That does work. If I add six plus six, that does give me 12. So how do I make it a negative 12 in order to, in or, when I add those two together? Well, they would have to be the same sign because same signs are gonna give me the positive answer for this last term, and they're both going to be minus six. So this one is actually x minus six squared. So this is a perfect square trinomial. Let's go on to the next one, 3x plus 9. First thing, again, that I want to do is see, can I factor out anything from both of these terms? I can factor out a 3. So we're going to write 3 over here, and then what's left over? We've got x plus 3. Can I factor this any further? You always want to look and see, can you factor what's inside the parentheses any further? I don't have an x squared term. I don't have anything else that I can divide out from both of these terms, so I think that this is it for this one. Let's go over here to this one, 5x squared plus 20x plus 15. Again, we want to start off with, can we factor out anything from all three terms? And I can. I can factor out a 5. So let's factor out 5 and see what's left over. x squared plus 4x plus 3, right? And then again, we want to look at what is inside the parentheses here to see if we can factor that further into binomials. And I think I can. I'm going to drop down my 5 and then separate this into two binomials x squared needs to be separated into x and x. And then for three, the only factors for three is one and three. It might be a negative one times a negative three, but my middle term is also positive. So in order to get that positive four, when I add my three and one, I think they're both gonna have to be positive. So I've got positive one and positive three. All right, let's try this next one, x squared minus 25. I see x squared is a perfect square. I know 25 is a perfect square, and they are being subtracted. So this is a difference of two squares. So I'm going to separate it out into binomials. I know that this is going to be x and x. I know the 25 is going to be split up into five and five. And in order to get that negative 25 at the end and no middle term, no x term, one of these has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. 
All right, last one. We've got 4x cubed minus 16x. Ooh, I threw a cubed in there for you. So first we're going to see, can we factor out anything from both terms? We can, we can factor out both a number and a variable. So four can be, uh, sorry, four can go into both four and 16. So that's part of what I'm factoring out. But also x can be factored out of both of these terms. So let's see what's left over. After I cancel out the four and one of these x's, I'm left with x squared minus 16 divided by four is four, and then both of the x's are gonna cancel out, so I'm just left with four. Now, can I factor x squared minus four even further? Yes, I can, because it is a difference of two squares. I've got x squared, perfect square, four, perfect square, and they are being subtracted. So we can factor these into binomials. Again, I'm gonna drop down my four X so I don't forget that. And then this X squared minus four is going to get factored into those two binomials. So this part is going to look a lot like the last problem that we just did. So X squared gets factored into X and X, four gets factored into two and two, one has to be plus, one has to be minus. And there we go, we factored everything. So I hope you did great on all of those practice problems. Please leave me a comment down below, let me know what you think of this. And I would love it if you would like and subscribe and let me know what else you want to see from me in the future. Thanks.